biyaya sa kanyang uh, pagdala uh, niya rito sa iglesia upang tayo ay sumaba. Uh, ang Diyos natin, siyang Diyos na dakila, siyang Diyos na makapangyarihan, siyang may hawak na ating buhay, siya nag-orchestrate ang lahat ng events sa ating buhay. At maging nung tayo tinawag ng Diyos, ito dahil sa kanyang biyaya. Salamat tayo sa Panginoon, this way. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come to you, or this privilege, O oh Lord, to come to your presence. Lord, we ask that you would help us, enable us by your grace, knowing that apart from you, we are always uh, insufficient, and we need your help, we need your guidance and illumination from your Holy Spirit. So guide us, O oh Lord, as we continue to study your word this hour. This is why in Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, um, this week, nag- nag-isip ako ng uh, ano kayong book na pwede kong ituro na at the same time uh, matatouch natin yung pinaka yung mga practical na bagay sa, sa lahat ng ating mga ginagawa. Sa, uh, yan man ay sa pag-aaral, sa trabaho, sa opisina, o sa mga mundane na mga bagay. Na kung saan lahat tayo ay magkaroon ng Ang Christianity is not just about uh, oh, about theology, but uh, also about yung practical na bagay in result doon sa pinag-aralan natin na theology. So yan po ang aking naisip at nanalangin ako sa Panginoon and uh, habang ako nagbabasa, anaisip ko yung Book of James. Uh, Book of James po tayo, anaisip ko na magkaroon tayo ng series sa Book of James sa providensya ng Panginoon ay Titingnan natin ito, five chapters, may silamang ngunit tuno ng mga uh, practical na pagtuturo si James at uh, marami po tayong matutunan sa book na ito. So yan po titingnan natin, sa biyay ng Panginoon, mag-alternate kami ni Pastor Mike. So kung mapapansin ninyo na siya minsan sa preaching, then time ako naman sa Sunday School, then Sunday School preaching. So yan po ang aming gagawin. But this morning, Titignan po natin yung, gas, yung Book of James. So, samahin niyo po ako sa pagbubukas uh, ng inyong Biblia. Uh, please open your Bibles sa uh, Book of James, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. Pero uh, I'm sure hindi natin mapukuha, ma, ma, uh, mapuk- ma, uh, cover lahat ng uh, uh, itong verses na ito, uh, verses 1 to 18. So, Verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it your joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in, in lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe, and no doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the winds. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded, unstable in all they do. Believers, in humble circumstances, ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers. The plant, its blossom, falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed, then after desire has conceived, 
it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Praise God for his word. Now here in the book of James, James, the writer of this epistle or letter, calls himself simply James. This James, the brother of Jesus Christ, ito ay kapatid ng ating Panginoong Isus, mismo, who was a leader of the early Jerusalem church. Mababasa natin sa Acts chapter 15, verse 13, 21, verse 18, and then Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. At merong tatlo, I think apat na pangalang James sa scripture. Pero dalawa lang ang, pira, ang dalawang kilala, na mas kilala. Una, yung James, brother of Jesus, or younger brother ni Jesus, at yung James, or the apostle James, na kung saan namatay ng mas maaga. And according to uh, a historian, uh, yung itong James the apostle, ay namatay noong AD 44. At uh, mababasa natin sa Acts chapter 12 verse 2. But this James was one of the younger brothers of Jesus. He became a disciple after Jesus' resurrection. And probably, noong after ng resurrection ni Christ, ay nagpaha- nagpakita yung kanyang appearance sa mga disciples. Uh, kung titignan natin sa, sa 1 Corinthians 15, yung account ni Paul na kung saan nagpakita siya sa 500 ng mga disciples ng ating Panginoong Isus. At sa mga una, sa 12 disi- 11 disciples rather, wala na si Judas doon, patay na siya. And then, nagpakita siya doon sa napakaraming mga disciples. And I think, kasama ito yung brother ni James. Nung during sa ministry ng ating Panginoong Isus Kristo, makikita natin very silent yung scripture, particularly yung synoptic gospels, doon sa narration kung ang mga mga kapatid ng ating Panginoon Su Kristo ay mananampalatay. But after the resurrection, doon na natin makikita na sila yung mga sumunod sa ating, sa kanilang elder brother, ang ating Panginoong Iso Kristo. And he was a wise leader of the Jerusalem church. He maintained a good reputation among Jews and earned him the title James the Just. Kaya kung makikita natin sa sa letter mismo ni James, makikita mo rito yung kanyang pagiging matuwid pagiging righteous, pagiging uh, dis- disciple ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. And these are according to Jewish and Christian traditions. Yan ang na karamihang mga uh, nakikita, mga, mga, mga writings ng second century, yan ang kanilang uh, recollection sa buhay ni James. And the letter is addressed to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Yan ang binasa natin sa Chapter 1, verse 1. And this is the era now here na kung saan yung fulfillment na the 12 tribes in the Old Testament identify these people as belonging to the people of God. And now, nung si Kristo ay naparito, nung siya ay dumating na, and he, since he is the fulfillment of God's plan in saving sinners, and here, the 12 tribes, binanggit uli and to the people now, to the people of God of the last days, meaning the entire church, Jew, Gentile and Jews alike. Wala nang, wala nang distinction. Lahat, uh, mahudyo ka man, o mga hintil ka man, so long as you believe in Christ, so long as you are Christ's disciples, you are now part of His church. Ibig sabihin, ito yung fulfillment ng pangako ng Diyos sa lumang ipan sa mga prophets na kung saan darating ang panahon na yung bansang Israel ay na-scattered because of uh, God's judgment to them. For example, the ten tribes na kung saan na, na, natalo ng Assyria and eventually yung mismo yung ten tribes ay hindi mo na ma-distinguish. Dahil yung mga remnants na kipagrelasyon sa mga uh, hindi mga hudyo, kaya nagiging half-breed sila. Ang tawag na yung mga 
Samaritan. Uh, and by the way, yung ten tribes, the capital city is Samaria. Kaya no wonder why tinatawag na Samaritans. Mga Samaritans, ibig sabihin half-breed. But God promised to His uh, prophets na time will come, yung mga scattered tribes of Israel would be reunited. So ito yung regathering, but no longer yung people, physical people of God, yung nation Israel, uh, kung saan some Christians would think na time will come, mayroong rebuilding of the temple, then sacrifice in the future, but that is no longer so, because in the New Testament, Jesus Christ now is the fulfillment of God's saving plan. In other words, the church, composed of Jews and Gentiles alike, are the people of God. Uh, so when we say the people of God are those who believe in Jesus Christ, those who are regenerated, in other words, born again. And the Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter God's kingdom. Now, ang paraan o pa ikay maging anak ng Diyos, it is no longer by generation. O ikay lahi man ni Abraham, mula sa lahi ni Abraham, at yun ang pinagmamalaki ng mga Pharisees. But now, is by regeneration. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mong may panganak muli. And talking of, if not talking of is a physical verse, but it is about spiritual. At yan po makikita natin ngayon. Now, since itong si James, makikita natin na kung saan siya sumulat o pangbigyan ng uh, encouragement, yung mga kapatiran niya na, 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 na scatter because of severe persecution. So the purpose of James' letter is to encourage them amidst trials and to exhort them to continue living faithfully. Mahirap mamuhay ng katapatan sa gitna ng persecution, pag-uusig. And yet, that's the appeal. That's the, kumbaga, yan ang kanyang pamanghikan sa mga kapatiran na kung saan mamuhay kayo in spite, in the means or amidst trials. So, being a pastor, James wrote a series of brief sermons that packages in a little form. So, sermon, sermon ho ito na kung saan maiksing sermon ni James na kanyang pinag-isa at nagiging sulat. At gusto hindi lang ito intended for his readers then, it is now intended for his readers in 21st century to us now. And notably, James bases his teaching on tradition. But this tradition, it is not human tradition. It is tradition based on the teaching of Jesus Christ. And this tradition is also the tradition uh, passed on to the apostles, disciples, or followers. Remember, in 1 Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken, in chapter 4 or 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul mentioned about tradition. But tradition, tradition about the teaching that yung mga na-receive ng mga apostles mismo sa ating Panginoong Hiso Kristo. At yun yung tradition na ipakita rito ni James, the teaching of Jesus. And these traditional teachings are thoroughly integrated into a distinctly Christian theological outlook. Ito yung outlook, perspective, anong pamumuhay na kung saan magiging Christ-like ang isang mananampalataya. And dito si James. James wanted to disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed. Pinapakita niya, if you are comfortable in your situation, James wants to disturb you. And doon sa mga dis mga disturbed na uh, because of persecution, James wants to comfort them. At yan po makikita natin sa sulat ni James. James intently focuses on getting believers to consistently live out the Christian faith they proclaim. If you believe in Jesus Christ, then what's your response? The response is, Walk. Walk in holiness, 
in uprightness. At yan po makikita natin. In other words, this letter is intense, intensely practical. For example, sa mga sulat ni James, example niya, showing face by your deeds or our deeds, responding well to trials, keeping our tongues under control, avoiding favoritism, cultivating a wisdom that will bring peace, etc. Mapapasa natin ito sa book of James. So, and my message or thesis this morning is simply this. Our theological understanding must be accompanied with our practical living. So, very simple. You can easily follow. Our theological understanding must be accompanied with our practical living. I remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was the pastor uh, in, twin, in nine, way back to uh, 20th century, nung panahon ng Second World War. Itong si Dietrich Bonhoeffer, bago siya, bago matalo yung Germany at bago nagpakamatay si, uh, si Hitler, ay hindi niya tinalimutan si Dietrich Bonhoeffer. In-execute mo na yan roon dun sa prison cell. Pinatay niya si Dietrich Bonhoeffer. At bago siya namatay, marami siyang nasulat. Isang book na napaganda, and I have in my library, is the yung discipleship, the costliness or ghostliness of this, uh, discipleship, about discipleship, and exposition yun sa Sermon on the Mount. And napakahusay habang siya sumula, nakakulong for many years, siya sumula truon at hindi naging idol ang kanyang buhay. At ito ang kanyang sinabi. Theology is not a private subject, private, private subject for theologians only. Nor is it a private subject for professors. Nor is theology a private subject of study for pastors. Theology is a matter for the church. In other words, hindi pwede na ang iglesia magpapatuloy na maglingkod. Oh, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, but bereft of theology. No, you cannot do that. Dahil si James, siya mismo, naunawa na yung theology. Bunay si theology, ay, may may, papa, bibigyan ka ng definition. So, lahat ng ginagawa natin sa church is all about theology. For example, God is a theological God. When you talk about God, talk about God is about theology. The Bible is theological book. The gospel is a theological message. The church is a theological mouthpiece. If you, if the church is faithful in its witness to Christ, you talk about theology. The Christian life is a theological demonstration. In fact, we demonstrate theology in the way we live. At yan po ang makikita natin sa scripture. In other words, theology separated from the life of Jesus has called us to live in Him is not biblical theology. Kung ang theology mo on emotion, the rest of theology is not biblical theology. If we are not believing right theology, our lives won't rightly reflect God. Dahil theology and practice are intertwined, interchangeable. You cannot separate the one uh, doon sa isa. I will use the technical term, and forgive me for using this. Orthodoxy, right doctrine, correct practice, or correct behavior. And orthopraxy, correct... Uh, uh, orthodoxy is sound teaching or correct teaching. Orthopraxy is correct behavior or correct practice. You... Orthodoxy and orthopraxy, yun yung theology and practical living. So, nakuha niyo po? So, pag sinasabi orthodoxy, huwag kayong malunod. Ah, that's malalim. No, hindi. Theology or orthodoxy is about sound teaching, correct teaching. When we say orthopraxy, practical living. And yung saan kasi yung mga professor sa, sa seminary, tamad magsa, magsabi ng mahabang sentence. Nag-isip lang sila ng isang word, yun na. So, but you define it. 
So, pag sinasabing orthopraxy, correct practice. So, nakuha po ba? Very simple. So, yan po ang makikita natin sa book ni James. As his disciples, we don't want people to just know about God, but to know Him as He has actually revealed Himself. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang simple sabi mo, oh, naniwala po by Diyos. O oh, naniniwala po na may lumikha nito. Yung mga masasabi nating mga uh, hindi militant atheists, kung minsan nasa gitna lang sila, naniwala sila may creator. O di kaya yung mga tao na hindi naman dumadalo sa church, they believe in God. Pero sa atin, hindi lang simple na naniwala tayo sa Diyos. But to know Him as He has actually revealed Himself to us in the scriptures. So from Genesis to Revelation, ito yung love letter ng Diyos. And my challenge is, lagi nyo bang binabasa ang love letter ng ating Panginoon? Pagka ang iyong mahal, ang bawa, yung asawa mong la- la- lalaki nagtrabaho sa ibang bansa, and two years yung contract, eh yung asawa ay eh, naging bugnotin na. Takal ng asawa ko. Nung sumulat yung kanyang husband, ano nangyari? Nabuhayan, na-inspire. At nung sulat pa ay mabulaklakin at mapaganda, ay talagang magiging emotional karoon. Ito yung scripture. Since ang Diyos natin, siya ay Diyos na napakadakila at wala ka nang pwedeng hanapin pa sa Diyos na ito. Lahat ng bagay na gusto natin malaman, nasa scripture na. May naalala ko, isang pastor, ay bulag na siya. At halos hindi na siya makabasa. Hindi na talaga siya makabasa. Pero anong ginawa niya, inutusan niya yung kanang anak. Anak, i-record mo yung binabasa mo sa scripture from Genesis to Revelation. At yun ang aking pakinggan to yung umaga. At yun, nakarinig pa rin siya sa scripture. How much more tayo? Mga malilinaw, malinaw pa yung mata. Hindi ka kaya sa akin. Nakailangan ko nang gumanon. Eh, mga kapatid, kailangan nating basahin, expose yourself to the Word of God. Dahil yun po yung practical. Dahil hindi lang sapat na nakitinig kayo sa akin o sa amin ni Pasumay. You need to practice. You need to practice. At yan po ang ginagawa natin. Nililay down natin yung foundation, and yet, now, as a response, ito ang gagawin bawat isa sa atin. Kailangan natin sabay-sabay na mag-take off. Sa isang eroplano, hindi pwede na pag lumipad yan ay nakaganon. Ay nako, something is wrong. Patay tayo yan. Kailangan sabay yung dalawang pakpak. At bago gawin ng, ng pilot yun, tinitesting mo niyan niya, gumagana ba yung pakpak? Kasi yun ang kailangan nagpapalit. Yun ang nagano ng hangin. Tama ba, sir? Yes. So, <laughs> hindi ako expert ron. Pero based on my observation, fly mo punta sa Davao. Bakit pinagalan lagi ng pilot? Ah, okay. Para subukan niya eh. Pagka subang bilis na eh, hindi pala mag-take off. Ano mangyari? Eh, lahat tayo mamamatay. So, one time, nung pabalik ako from Panabo, ay, ano, ano, from nung namatay yung aking tiyahin. Tapos pawi na ako. Yung umulan, malakas ang ulan. At doon pa lang yung turbulence ay napakatin. Talagang ramdam mo na yung mga kasama ko nagtitense na eh. <laughs> Eh, nung pa, ano na, yung pa-landing na yung airplane, ang lakas ng ulan. So, ang ginawa ng pilot, in, in just one second, ginawa nun niya, boom! Nakaano na kami, biglang duman. Bakit kami umakya? Tinakita na namin yung luma. Ako na yung mga kasama ko pa. Nag-try na lang ako, Panginoon. Kung ngayon ako kukunin, ah, okay, nandun na dito sa flight. <laughs> Pakabalik yung airplane, umikot ulit. So, it took 15 to 20 minutes bago siya naglalo ulit. Wisdom ko yun ng pilot. Hindi niya, hindi mo pwede questionin yun. Nakita na namin yung lupa. Bakit pa ganun? Kaya lakas ng ulan kasi. So, yun pong nangyari. So, yan. Yan po ang ay mga krisyano ay kailangan natin yung practice. Kailangan natin ang tamang practice dahil mayroon tayong tamang doktrina, tamang teaching. Okay? So, in, a, in Church of Jesus Christ, there can be and should be no non-theologians. Iniisip na nila, 
Ah, ako, miyembro lang ako. Ayaw ko maging theologian. Sorry. Because if the moment you believe in Christ, you are a theologian. Because believing in Christ is all about theology. Repentance and faith is all about theology. Everything is all about theology when you study the scriptures. So, maging view natin sa creation. Oh, napagada ng creation. Pero hindi ka mag-stay roon. Oh, ang galing ng creation. Uh, pero, na namiss mo yung creator. Hindi. Tayo mga Christians, yes, napakadakila ng Diyos. Uh, one time, pumunta ako sa isang mataas na bundok. Na-amaze ako at speechless. Sabi ko, napakaganda ng creation ng Diyos. Pero yung isang atheist, pumunta siya sa isa Mount Everest. Pagdating niya, wow! Napakaganda ng Big Bang. <laughs> Sipin mo yun eh. Big Bang yun pala doon sa isip niya. Eh, paano naging na-form yung Big Bang? Eh, said, come on. Eh, naniwala tayo na mayroong lumikha sa lahat ng bagay. So we reject a practical living that devoid of theology. Ang tawag natin yan, moralism. Also, we reject legalism that focus on rules. Hindi po yun ang teaching ni Christ. And brethren, we are so easily seduced into believing that we actually can gain all the approval we need by our behavior. And that is moralism. And the deadly danger of moralism has been a constant temptation to the church and an ever convenient substitute for the gospel. And Indian theology, that is moralism. Paano tayo mamumuhay based on theology? On the other hand, <coughs> legalism is any attempt to gain acceptance and forgiveness from God through your own works or merits. And legalism values human tradition over and above the text of Scripture. At hindi po yan ang theology. Hindi po yan ang teaching ng Scripture. When we talk about Christian maturity or Christian spirituality, is a part of living in response to the gospel. At yan ang punto ni James dito. Orthodoxy and orthopraxy are both equal truths. Anong sabi ni James? We are justified by faith alone. Yes, yun ang teaching ni Paul. Pero ang sabi ni James, but such faith is never alone. Yes, we are justified by faith. But, but that faith is not an empty one. It produces works. Good works. Good deeds. Good deeds. Yan po ang makikita natin. So the Bible teaches that correct doctrine comes before and informs correct behavior. If we truly have correct beliefs, our behavior should align with those beliefs. Yun ang sabi ni Paul sa Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Sabi niya, Therefore, brothers and sisters, kayo na mga binago ng Diyos, kayo na nakara in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifice. So, makikita mo roon yung ating theology, yung teaching ni Paul doon sa chapters 1 to 11, chapters 1 to 11 ng Book of Romans, then chapter 12 onwards, makikita mo yung roon yung practice, yung orthopraxy. Therefore, robust theology ought to lead to robust living because theology and practical living must be intertwined in a Christian. Yan po yung introduction po <laughs> ng book of James. And I'm sure, doon pa lang sa introduction, ay eh, marami na po tayong natutunan. So, may question doon sa book, sa introduction. Hindi eh, ko nadagdagan, baka too much na. <laughs> okay, introduction pa lang yun. Dahil gusto ko lang bigyang diin yung marami kasi nagsabi, may mga writers na, ay yung James, mga on practical uh, kaya sa church, we will talk about practical uh, uh, kahit na uh, walang, walang theology. Eh, mali po yun. Hindi po yun ang punto ni James rito. 
So, yung theology ay una, then susunod yung practical, yung application ng buhay bilang mananampal. Okay? So, any question? Doon, doon pa lang. Uh, tapos na po tayo. <laughs> so, gabiling, uh, ito, nahanda ko na po ito, mga kapatid. Apat po ito na hand out. So, hindi ko pwedeng ibuhos ito sa inyo, baka uh, machok tayo eh. Mahirap na. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> clarification sa, sa ating pinag-aralan. And sa sunod dati pag-aral dito, lalo magiging ma-intensify dahil napakarami siyang tinanggit rito about trials, temptations, about pangs, Uh, about wisdom, etc. Kasi itong si James, talagang punong-puno siya ng wisdom. Uh, ito yung tao hindi nagsasalita pagka hindi niya pinag-iisipan. Parang in-imagine ko, ito yung tao bago magsalita ay niisip niya kung anong lalabas sa kanyang pila. Kasi binanggit niya yung tao. Uh, may mga tao kasi, merong akong napakinggan sa isang seminar yung pastor, host pastor sa isang seminar, eh, nagpakitang gilas dahil malaki yung marami yung dumalo. Uh, palakpakan, wow, ang galing ng pastor. Eh, nag-joke siya. Eh, yung joke niya, hindi katanggap-tanggap doon sa mga attendees. In five minutes, nagkaroon ng silence. Sitin mo yun, sira ang integrity ng pastor. Dahil yung, yung kanyang binitawang salita, hindi po katanggap-tanggap. Minsan, may mga preachers, masyadong mabilis mag-isip, mabilis magsalita, pero hindi grounded sa scripture. Pero pag hindi ka aware, doon sa mga sinasabi, oh, tao, gondin lang na magturo. But, bereft, bereft of truth. Kulang, lacking, insufficient. Kaya, pag tayo mag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, see to it. Kailangan natin, we need to study. We need to reflect God's Word. And sa inyo mga kapatid, yun yung kailangan na magiging kagaya ni Pastor Noel Spinoza. Dahil if you read the Bibles, read the Bible, again and again, from Genesis to Revelation, magiging lalong lalalim ang inyong understanding sa Scripture. So, kung mag lang kayo sa magpapapakinggan yung every Sunday. Walang supplement. Walang pag-aaral sa inyong sarili. Walang pagbabasa ng mga other books. Eh, magiging mabagal ang ating paglago. But, one thing for sure, pagka lagi kayo nagbabasa ng scripture at nagbabasa kayo ng mga books na nakatulong sa inyo, lalago tayo. Kung alam niyo po mga kapatid, ang manifestation ng maturity, hindi doon sa dami ng kanyang stock doon sa dami ng kanyang na-receive, kundi kung paano niya pinapractice. Dito si James Mangusan. Okay? So, yan po. Muna. Sure. Sure. Okay. There is that tendency <coughs> among uh, uh, especially pastors and elders to uh, study God's Word. And are able to uh, preach it to the congregation, mm-hmm. but, but lacking in terms of their own practice. Mm-hmm.